Continuing on, I've lined it up already to make sure that my drawing is positioned on the paper in a consideration of the principles of design. Things like balance, things like unity, things like harmony, those type of principles. Pattern, rhythm, repetition. Got a little bit of that going on here naturally. I right, just continuing to trace, going relatively lightly again. The idea is you want to be able to erase the marks that you put down with your pencil because you can't swear that they're exactly the way you want them to be. Again, every generation of tracing, you lose something. So when, once you're finished with this, you can go back over it and modify it so that way it is exactly the way you want it to read to your audience, to your viewer. So moving right along. Again, if you paint watercolor on top of graphite, it seals it in and then it becomes part of your design. The outline in graphite will become part of your design. And unless you want it as part of your design, and for this particular project, we do not want it as part of our design. You don't want your shapes outlined. You want each value to speak for itself. Each shape is going to be a value. Each value is a shape. Either way you want to think of it, it works out to be the same thing. And I'm going to close that off there. If I need to open it, I will. So that I get it closed and I feel comfortable with that. And this is movement of her hair. Keep that line continuous. That real nice sense of rhythm and gesture. Continuous. And I am going, because I am right-handed, I am going from drawing from left to right. So this way, I'm not passing my hand across where I've drawn with my pencil and smudging it. I, so this way, it keeps my drawing nice and clean. Tracing the lines softly, nice. Take that right up to the edge and that defines the shape. So again, keeping it nice and light and also keeping it in consideration of where I pass my hand. So if you're left-handed, obviously work from this direction across. If you're right-handed, then work again where it makes sense to work in that direction. So I'm already modifying some of my lines because I know I didn't want all of the lines that I accidentally drew. I'm just cleaning these up even as I go along. Here I can start drawing should I care to. Making that more of a hoop because I did remember that I had drawn it slightly off. And taking that down and again letting it circle back behind her ear and using that to frame her neck. I'm not going to go too much farther over this direction because I want to come in and draw the sense of hair here. I may go back in and make these a little less geometric in rhythm and shape. And these are the contours I found 
her hair moving. So they are somewhat irregular. I don't follow a precise mathematical measurement. Moving that down. Again, this allows me a really nice clean copy to work with by using this process. Following the lines. I needed to physically access it better. And I am going to have to go back in and clean up these lines a little when I consider my shapes that I'm going to paint. I might clean up these lines just a little. Going back in this side. I hope I'm not blocking the camera with my shoulder. Tracing the lines lightly. So following that contour of her chin. And I think I will go up to the top now and continue working on the hair from here. Okay. I'm just making sure I have all of the lines that I'm interested in capturing. This way I've got my enclosed lines, so that's what makes the shape. Like the idea of gesture coming into play. the uh, contour of her chin. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's capture the rest of this shape. This I'm going to let artistically move into a dissolve from the background. Just let the background and I, I plan on creating a nice subtle color on in the background over here and I might put some geometric shapes in the background. I think I'm going to put a nice geometric shape in the background to offset the organic nature of the portrait lines and then I might do the reverse for the geometric portrait where I will put organic lines in the background. All right, that's uh, working out nicely. like I'm covering 
this area where I had previously drawn because it's physically easier for me to go that direction. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do it a little over here as well. So I'll just keep my hand fairly lightly and anchored so I don't do too much smudging and I'll be aware that perhaps I may have smudged so I'll keep that in mind when I go back in before I actually start painting and I'll clean up any smudges I may have made. All right, finishing up that shape. Looks like I can go in up here, I feel fairly comfortable tracing these shapes here and here and this one as well. And then this one is a contour. And this up around and I rotated my pencil because it looked like I uh, had got some uneven wear on my tip and I am using a sharp pencil at least it was sharp when I started here and it still feels relatively sharp so I'm not leaving these really thick, dark lines, as you can see. And continue tracing all of the shape. Take the major outline of the glasses and get that nice and traced. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that's representative of her eyelid. Move that in through there. And the top of the glasses. And some highlights, another highlight there. Moving this down in through here. And if I need to adjust these, I will before I actually start painting. Make the drawing look a little more like my actual subject here. I may modify my drawing after I've done these tracings. And that's why we do it in pencil, one of the reasons that plus we just, there's no marker. We don't want outlines ultimately here. All right, so we're getting this nice and drawn in. And that describes the entire bridge of her nose. There was a highlight coming in through here. Close that shape off nice. And again, coming in through that area, give the contour of the glasses a nice gesture stroke, and do the same again all the way across here. If I missed it, I go back in, I'll straighten that up or modify it rather. Take this all the way to that edge of the face. Take that shape all the way down. Take that shape all the way down to the side of her face. And move those glasses all the way around. Up the cheek. And there's the bridge of the nose. That may be the side of the glasses. I may have uh, misread something in there. I'll adjust that one. And if I need to, I know that is part of her 
cheek. So that may actually go all the way up that direction. doing a lot of this in remembering some of the things I wanted to change and getting some of those changed a little to a very small degree even in this drawing getting those corrections made like that and it looks like I may have forgotten the interior of the glasses somewhere in here and that's okay at my drawing or my reference rather and draw that in it won't be too hard to connect the dots there of what might belong there or not get that shape going all over again okay let's work out this what am I seeing here okay and I've got that there, move that in the bridge of her nose, working into her cheek there. Let's go back here and get these areas in her cheek established. Okay. Partly is the hair falling across her, the shadow of the hair rather, falling across her cheek is why we've got all of these different crazy shapes over here coming into play uh, across her face that don't necessarily describe only the contours and different planes in her face, but they also describe shadows falling across her face. So those are two different ways that we decided to analyze this photo, this reference photo, by looking at the planes and seeing where we could separate those out into larger shapes, such as we've got here. I know I'm gonna to have to redo some things there on the uh, mouth and the nose. If you remember from earlier in the video, unless I decide to split this into two and then that case it would be from my last video either way let's just go with earlier so if you remember from earlier the couldn't quite see all of the detail but I did not need to work it out until I get to this stage of the design where I'm the stage of the design where I am ready to refine those shapes before I actually start painting them in. So that's going to be the final call before we actually start painting those in on the next video. All right. Almost finished there. Let's see if we go back and move this that direction. May have to modify that in there. Can't swear that is the accurate shape. That does describe the side of the mouth and some highlights in through here. Looks like there's a shadow that is describing, that shape is describing rather. 
Now this is describing some of the planes in her mouth. This is describing some other planes in her mouth. And it looks like I've got another shape here. Well, that's why you can't get in. That's good. There's a plant just flew by my window since I'm using my window as a makeshift light table. And we'll be doing this quite a bit in this design course. is using a window as a makeshift light box. So you're going to find yourself using tracing paper. I'll do a demo with tracing paper also. All right, I'm almost finished here. I'm really excited about that because this is not the most comfortable thing I've ever done in life, is have my arm twisted at this angle, but it's worth it, so that way I can get this lovely lesson out to you guys. Okay, getting down to the heart shape, I decided to draw on her chin, there we go. Yay! Back there, and a lovely divot in her chin. Have that wrapped around already. And there is a sense of hair wrapping around this direction. And a shoulder with a t-shirt and I will do some type of artistic redesign blend of this area so I'm gonna probably redo these lines I don't really have them entirely described in the shapes because I've got some that are just lines so I'm gonna redefine these as shape and I've got it completely transferred now except I do not so I need to get the rest of this part of her face and eye in. And get that drawn in. And soon I'll be able to party. Draw that in. And these are lines I probably am going to have to adjust because I'm sure they're going to look a little weird those shapes since they're so many generations removed now from the original lines I drew and let's move back and it looks like I did capture everything this time there might be some connection in through here that I would like to describe and I will do that and I've got my drawing on my watercolor paper finished I'll show you a photo of that soon